Okay, after riding it for a month, might as well do a little review on this bike since uh, there's been a lot of people trying to hunt this bike down and I get asked all the time about it when people see it. So if anybody stumbles across this video looking for some critique on this bike, here it is. Uh, this is the 2021 Polygon Siskiyou T7 in the large 29 inch and after riding it for a week or a month of doing some upgrades to certain things I wanted to do to it it is a, a lot more than I uh, expected it's a great bike I am in love with it at the moment just needs a couple few little minor tweaks here and there but uh maybe start from the front it came with the schwabel hans domps in 2.6 it's a lot of tire for me i was used to riding 2.4 and 2.3 in the back now i got a 2.6 um i ended up it's the front is still with a tube i never switched it over to tubeless however on the back i decided to uh switch over to a maxis minion dhr2 tubeless i wanted to uh have a better situation for downhill and some gnarly terrain and stuff kind of like an intermediate rider um not a beginner but not exactly an expert either but i've been riding a long time and do some black diamond and double black tech trails and downhill stuff and uh therefore obviously i needed a stronger downhill casing tire uh just to get back to the front this came with the RockShock Recon RL front fork 140 travel. Uh, so far, I'm very happy with it. Um, it's got a, I have a 180 rotor on the front with a four piston Tektro brake setup. And uh, I'm happy with it. I'm just gonna switch over the brake pads to the metal ones and get a 200 rotor. I did that to the back as one of my upgrades after hitting Mountain Creek Bike Park and doing some downhill. I realized I could use a little bit more braking power. It's only got a two piston on the back, even though there's a four piston on the front. And I went with the really good metal pads. I forgot which brand I chose, but I put an SRAM 200 rotor on it, swapped out the 180 for 200. So between that and the metal pads, it gave me a little more braking power that I was looking for in the back. So between putting a downhill tire and beefing up the brakes a little bit, I've kind of beefed up the back end. Uh, some other upgrades are I put the absolute black oval chain ring on the front. I also got the STFU chain dampener set up, which was quite interesting to install, but I got it pretty nailed. Uh, keeps your bike quiet in case anybody's wondering what that is. Uh, Pacific Northwest legend Chris Kovarik, uh, ex World Cup downhill racer, invented these things and they are worth every penny. The oval chain ring is worth every penny too because it uh, definitely helps with increased pedal efficiency on your upstroke. Uh, I felt it the second I started riding the bike. Uh, okay, so the rear suspension is the Rock Shock. Deluxe Select Plus 130 Travel. Uh, I'm 5'10, 200 pounds. Uh, I have the sag set perfectly at 30%. I got about 180 pounds of pressure in it. My Recon 40, 140 mil travel fork I have set at, I believe, 130 pounds of pressure. I usually keep the rebound pretty high until I'm hitting some jumps and then I'll you know turn that down sometimes I could lock out the shock if I'm hitting some crazy uphill stuff the stiff in the back up I'm riding with uh, I believe I got about 24 pressure in the back 19 in the front on my tire pressure 
Up here, we got the Trans X seat post. The thing works smooth as butter. It's really good. Just f works flawless. And here's how I have the lever positioned. Here are the Tektro levers that come with it. They're okay. The jury's still out on whether I like the brakes or not. Uh, came with Entity Expert bars at 780 mil. I have not cut them. Supposedly 770 is my right measurement, but I decided to try to ride them at 780 without uh, cutting them down. And so far I'm digging it. Um, I'm afraid of cutting it to 770 and wishing I kept it at 780. So I haven't decided if I'm gonna do that yet. Uh, also, as you can see, I swapped out a lot of the hardware with uh, some nice gold hardware I had from my last Kona hardtail bike. So the, a lot of the bolts, stem spacers, stuff like that. Uh, got the Rock Brothers pedals. Not bad. I wish the posts were a little bit taller and fatter, but I could always swap out pedals. That's no big deal. Uh, got some one-up grips. I bored out the ends of them so I could use my uh, bar ends. These grips are actually very comfortable and have this ripped part underneath that uh, kind of feels good under your fingertips. It feels like you have some good grip. There it is. Oh, we got the WTB Volt seat that I put on there. I wasn't kind of digging the seat that comes with the with this bike, although it seems a little bit more cushiony, but I may uh, put the stock seat back on it. It was an entity seat. Other than that, there's the bike. Those are the upgrades. I love this thing. It it's uh, definitely put a smile on my face. I've rode some rugged terrain with this at one of the bike parks. Been hitting a lot of the trail systems around and it's a very stable bike. They improved the geometry this year compared to the 2020 in that they made the uh, seat tube a little more steeper and they took the head tube and made it a little more slack. And uh, the front feels beastly for downhill stuff, yet the seat tube angle helps with some uphill climbing. And uh, that's it. I love this bike. It is worth every penny. It is, in my opinion, the best bike out there right now in, in the entry level price range and a great bike to base off of and do your upgrades over time as you can afford them. It comes with decent components but uh, a little bit of work and upgrading a couple little things. And next thing you know, it's a trail mountain beast. So if anybody is on the fence, whether they should get this or not, uh, I, I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching.
shout out to Remy Metal here because watching his videos got me ready for this shit. Ooh. It's actually fun navigating that stuff. Crazy that tree down. <sighs> Oh. <sighs>
like it. 